hello babes and babettes and everything in between um i decided to make a part two of this video of the speedrun drama video i thought it was necessary because i was able to really dig deep into a lot of what was going been going on with the goose drama and all that stuff and i was able to get talk to a lot of people and get a lot of different perspectives and point of views and i i need to make a video talking about i guess what I found from that and what I feel like we could do in the speedrun community to help so that this kind of stuff doesn't happen again. Um, I was able to have a really long conversation with the person who originally took all the pictures of the conversations with Goose and all of his friends and um, she's also a trans person, she's a trans girl. And I was able to have a long conversation, and, and she's a very, very reasonable, intelligent person. And I learned something really important from her, of the point of view of the trans community. And then I was able to give her my perspective as well, and I think she understood as well on my behalf. Um, I want to start a little bit with my history and my perspective and what and my experiences. Um, when I I was born in Venezuela. I wasn't born in America. I was born in Venezuela, and when I was three years old, I moved to Trinidad, which is an island right off the coast of Venezuela. They speak English, though. It's a a very, very third world place, very third world mindset. Lots of close-minded people. They're not accepting of other cultures, of um, of other likes and dislikes. Um, very, very homophobic place. Um, very transphobic as well, plenty phobics, the list goes on. It's a very unwelcoming place. And um, apart from that, me being a Latin person, in Trinidad it just so happens that less than 1% of the population in Trinidad consists of Latin Americans. So I got most of everything going against me. Um, so when I grew up in that place, when I was about 10 years old, you know, closing in on the, the teenage adolescence stage. Um, I started learning a lot of things like everyone else um, about myself. I realized that I used to think about boys and girls and not just girls. Um, and I knew it was different. I knew it was, something was just not normal about it. Um, or what people then perceived as normal. Um, and I knew I was different. And uh, the more I grew up, the more I realized. And when I was about 13 years old, 12, I went off to, well, in Trinidad, it's a different system, school system. It's, it's called secondary school. When you're 12, you go to secondary school, which is basically high school. And when I got to high school, it's an all-male school. Because in Trinidad, it's only all-male or all-female school, high schools. So I grew up in a very, very, very masculine, very testosterone-filled society in high school. Everything was about being tough and being a man, and that's how they raised you and taught you. And I happen to be very introverted, very, very, I hate confrontation. I'm a very feminine person externally. And it was very hard to grow up in that. So automatically people noticed these trends and they called me a lot of names and they ridiculed me. Um, and being gay as well, it made it even worse. Um, when I was about 12 years old, I found my best friend. We met and we were friends for years and years. Um, I'll get back to that a little bit later. On September 13, 2011, one of my best friends, not the one I was referring to, but another friend, committed suicide because he was also gay. And he was being blackmailed by somebody telling him that he was going to tell everybody. and He couldn't handle the pressure and he, he, he killed himself. And since then, well, I got really scared after that, to say the least. I didn't know what to think and how to proceed uh, being who I was. I didn't, I was so terrified. And I tried my best to turn to my friends and try to explain them my situation. But every time I tried to, they would suspect things and be immediately turned negative. And then I stopped. And then I would just lose a friendship, basically. So 
but I had a best friend for years and I never really tried bringing it up or anything but when I was about 16 a lot of my other friends were telling my best friend that you know hey this person is gay or whatever and and spreading all these rumors and literally the next day he stopped talking to me never talked ever again that was it lost my best friend because of stupid rumors that I was gay um, and I, I went through this all my life and um, it was very very hard to accept who I was not only to accept the fact that I was being discriminated against so badly but also to learn to accept myself as being gay um, apart from that being a Latin American in such a huge minority basically I was ridiculed for that as well people used to purposefully talk Spanish and pretend like I didn't know how to speak English pretend I was um, not from the country that I wasn't that I don't deserve to be there and like you know you're, you're not Trinidadian this and that um, and I had to get accustomed to that too and uh, I used to have thoughts many times I used to think of the friend who killed himself and I used to think you know what makes me what is stopping me from doing the same um, because I'm going through what he did and, and worse um, three and a half years ago I decided to move I left Trinidad I moved to Spain and well to say the least it, it was the reason and that was the whole reason why I moved to Spain because I couldn't live a life like that I couldn't live in a place like that coming here to a first world country to a different environment where you go in the city and you see gay people you see lesbians you see anybody everybody in LGBT people holding hands and having gay prides and and uh, it, it's just it made me able to live a free life and it totally changed my, it changed my life so what I wanted to do I guess basically was to let you guys know what my perspective is like uh, really long intro but <laughs> I thought it was necessary to give you guys my perspective to understand and the person that I talked to in the trans community that took all these pictures with goose and stuff I was able to explain to her my experiences and my perspective and to let her know that I I understand the LGBT community very much I understand what it feels like to be ridiculed to be not accepted um, and uh, with that said she understood my perspective and then she gave me her perspective and her perspective the trans community's perspective and um, I understand I learned a lot too and a lot of what I learned is that most of what the trans community is trying to do is trying to educate people outside of the community so they would learn and understand and accept why they are who they are and why they identify as who they are and that is a great concept it makes a lot of sense of course but there come now comes people like cyber demon for example who goes by the name andrea on twitter this is a person who made all of the initial claims and brought out the whole goose drama um and then threw gdq under the bus calling them awful names and did all this stuff and since then i decided to engage because I wanted to understand why she was thinking and why she was thinking the way she does and why she was so angry and from engaging the same thing happened to me she was calling me names threatening me to to call me out and show that I wasn't a good person trying to get me away from the community talking about making a list of people to 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 call out and to I have pictures of conversations that people have sent me of her basically digging in to find something that she can use an excuse to call them out and it's a very 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 um, hostile situation and a person like cyber demon doing this is the opposite of what the trans community needs to do and I think that's what they want to do um, and I let the person know uh, the one who took the picture is that she needs to reach out to Cyber because she's a, one of her best friends and let her understand that this is the absolute opposite of what you want to do to get people educated 
and to understand the trans community. Um, by her resorting to, sorry, by her resorting to call people names and take this approach, it's going to do the exact opposite of uniting the community, but it's going to rather cause more or create more seclusion and division. If she wants to call people names and tell them they don't know anything, it's just going to want people to not want to get educated and reject you more and want to fight with you more. I mean, any sane person would realize that. And um, this is why I decided to engage and this is why I decided to make this video too. Um, to let her know that if she keeps doing this and if she decides at the end of the day that this is the approach she wants to take, that she wants to take, it is only going to divide the community a lot more and people are going to resort to reporting her and it's not going to end well. And this this needs to stop. This this, this huge neg this negativity and just anger, it's not going to unite the community and people are going to retaliate. And um, this ties back to when Caleb and stuff were talking about, you know, it needs to be about the games again. It needs to, this all of this pol politics needs to stop and i agree to a certain extent of course speedrunning is about the game it needs to go back to the to the games to the speedrunning but there's obviously a a, a a problem in the trans community in speedrunning where they 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 need to be accepted they need to be people need to be educated people need to understand their point of view um it's just that the approach is very very wrong it is not the right approach and that is my point of view on this. So people like Cyberdemon, if you want to continue doing this again, it's it's going to make it a lot worse. Um, and people don't want to worry about, in speedrunning, they don't want to worry about being scared to engage other people and, and thinking about having to be educated and, and accepting everybody. They want to think about the games. So I think a lot of it is that people in the trans community, when they reach out to people and trying to educate them, people just don't, they want to be focused on the game. So they, they receive it as, why are you doing this to me? And it seems as though they're rejecting it. It makes it look like they're just rejecting everything and it makes people in the LGBT community even more furiated. Um, so... Obviously, the concept of educating people and trying to make them understand the trans community and the LGBT in general, it's the right concept, of course, but the approach is wrong. And you have to consider the way that other people think and perspective. And that ties into another quick point where when I was engaging in a certain thread, um, Andrea, Cyberdemon, and Princess Proto as well came in and, and was trying to I guess instill the idea of that depending on who you watch and listen to it's going to influence you politically and and your beliefs are going to be changed and all this kind of stuff and again that is if when you the more you do that to people the more you make them feel like they don't know about their core beliefs they don't they can't trust themselves and it's going to make them have even more of a reason to want to reject you you have to consider people's perspectives and, and that not every single thing you believe might be the right thing and that other people deserve to express their opinions. At least express their opinions. They deserve it. And if you don't agree, then you engage in conversation, in, in an argument if it has to reach that way. And try to get them to understand your opinion. So people like Cyberdemon come in and tell me, no, you're wrong, you can't watch this person. You're this, you're that, you're a Nazi. Uh, you support this and that because you think this and that and then you put words and thoughts into their mind It's not gonna work. It's just it does not make any sense And this is why I decided to engage and take a stance because it is not going the right direction. The approach is completely wrong and When you do these things it's gonna it's just a generalization that is gonna cause more seclusion again and um, Yeah that this is I felt like I had to make a video again on this um, and I hope you guys understand the point of view and I enjoy making YouTube videos too I think this was a lot of fun um, it's a different it's a lot different than streaming it's more passive it's more you get time to like 
put together ideas and make these cool videos and I had a lot of fun. So expect more YouTube videos, I think, of I don't know what, but videos. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, yeah, thanks for listening. I hope our community can, can resolve this issue and move on and not get banned from GDQs and just play video games fast, dude. Because that's what it's mostly about. Mostly. Notice I said mostly and not what it's all about. Because there's a lot more to it as well. But it's the gist. Um, but yeah. Um, thanks again, everybody. And peace out.